Today I'm building a bike wheel from scratch and I'm going to show you all the steps that you'll need to get from this to this. So the first step that you need is to buy all your parts. I have a road hub. It has 24 holes in it. I have a rim which also has 24 holes and 24 spokes. I have two different lengths that I'm working with today um, because the hub has an offset to it, so the drive side is the flange is pushed over a little bit. Those spokes are generally a bit shorter, uh, and the spokes that come from the non-drive side are a bit longer, so you need to buy slightly longer spokes, usually. The only way to really find out is to put all your measurements into a spoke calculator. There's lots of different ones online. In this case, I'm using a two-cross pattern on both sides. The first step is to use a uh, spoke thread compound. So I have a spoke prep. So the spoke threads right here are going to get dipped into this blue liquid and it's going to help the threads uh, seal when they get screwed into the nipples. And then once the compound is on all the threads, I'm just going to let them dry. It'll take about 10 minutes. So I've got all the compound on the threads and I'm just going to wait for them to dry. Okay, so if you want to line up the logo on the hub with the hole where the valve stem will come out of, uh, you're going to need to start with your first spoke in a very specific spot. This first spoke is going to be a drive side spoke, so it's one of my shorter ones. And the spoke pattern that I've picked is a two cross. So each spoke will cross uh, other spokes twice before it gets to the rim. So the logo is right in the middle here. And I'm gonna put this first spoke in elbow facing out and three holes over from the logo. So one, two, three, and I'm gonna put the spoke in right there. So this is, what's called my key spoke. And this spoke here is going to go into the hole just to the left of the valve hole. All right, so I got my spoke. Uh, this is actually an asymmetric rim. If you buy an asymmetric rim, it'll be a little bit more centered between the two hub flanges. And my hope is that I'm going to be able to get more even spoke tension when I eventually build up the, the wheel. So I'm gonna put this first spoke in uh, right here and the asymmetry of the rim is pointing away from me, which is perfect, that's what I want. I, I want it pointing away from the drive side. And now this rim, it comes with washers and with spoke nipples. So I think with this one, you need to build it with washers. So I'm gonna put a washer on first and then a nipple. And I'm not gonna thread it on completely I'm just going to put it on enough so that it will hold it there. Okay, so I have my first spoke in the hole here. It's elbow out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop five more spokes every second hole. So the next spoke's going to go in here, and then the next one's going to go in there. Okay, so the other spokes are in the hub now. It's the drive side elbows in. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the next spoke and I wanna put it in four holes to the side. So one, two, three, four. So this spoke is gonna go in this hole here. And I'm gonna need a washer and a nipple. All right, so the first six spokes are in. And you can see here, the hub can turn one way or the other. And what I'm gonna do, because the valve hole is right here, I wanna turn it so that the spoke right next to the valve is basically vertical. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna leave a nice space in here to put your pump in. Uh, you won't have a spoke that's cutting across where, where you wanna put your pump. So the next step now 
is going to be to put some spokes in the non-drive side and if you look sort of right through this first spoke here you'll notice that it kind of goes between this hole and this hole on the other side so what I'm going to do is I want to have my non-drive side spoke come also elbow out and up oh you can't see it up just to the left so on the left side of that hole this one's going to come up and it's going to attach immediately to the left of the first spoke which is the key spoke there Okay, so that's the first spoke on the non-drive side. And just like with the drive side, I'm gonna drop five more in right now and just go all around again. So every second hole, I'm putting one in, elbow out. These are the longer spokes because they're the non-drive side. And they're in the hole that's just to the right of the, drive, the equivalent on the drive side. So I'm gonna lace them one hole to the right of where the drive side spoke was. So the next step now, I'm gonna go back to the drive side and I'm gonna take my shorter spokes if you forget how long your spokes are, it's handy to have one of these measuring tools. Yeah. Uh, and so now I'm gonna have the spokes pointing elbow in. So I'm gonna flip the wheel over to the non-drive side and all of the open drive side holes, I'm just gonna put a spoke in and drop all six of them in. All right, and this is where it gets a bit tricky because, like I said, the spokes are two cross. So they, every spoke is gonna, on the same side, is gonna cross another one twice. Uh, and so this is where you have to be a bit careful. All right, so this is what it looks like. I have my elbow out spokes that I did first. These are the elbow in spokes that have to get threaded now. This is my valve hole, this is my key spoke. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. So it's a two cross, which means it has to go, has to go over this spoke immediately to its left. It's gonna cross it, just like that. And then the next spoke, which is this one here, so the next dry side spoke here, this spoke is gonna go under it. So I'm just gonna bend the spoke, it's gonna go under. And I'm gonna thread this into the hole immediately to the left. The first open hole to the left right here. When the cross spokes start going in, you might find that it's hard to actually get the spoke all the way up into the rim. That's what this tool right here is for. It's a nipple driver. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a nipple onto the tool, not forgetting the washer. All right, and I'm just gonna keep going around and do the double cross, so over top of the first one and then under the second, and I'm getting the hole, the first hole to the left that's available. And now it's time for the last spokes on the non-drive side. So there's only six holes left, I'm gonna drop these in. So these are the last spokes, non-drive side. Two cross, so it's gonna go over this spoke and then under the spoke here. So I'm just gonna bend it. Try not to scratch the rim. And it'll go in this hole here. So the wheel is fully laced. And the valve hole is right here. And as you can see, there's a space between the two spokes. It's not like a cross, like right here. So there's a nice open space, so if it's, it'll be easy to pump up this wheel when it's all ready. The next step, is I'm gonna put it in the truing stand here. 
and I'm gonna tension all the spokes. I'm gonna try to get it even, and then I'm gonna take out any, any wobbles side to side, up and down, uh, and make sure that laterally the dish is okay. I got my wheel on my stand, and all the spokes are super loose right now. If I spin it, you can see it's all over the place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten each of the spokes, basically tightening until I can't see any more of the threads. That should be relatively even everywhere, should give it some tension, and then from there I'll work out the, the kinks and so on. Okay, so I tightened all the nipples to the point where I can't see the threads anymore. Next step is to apply a little bit of lube just to help when you tighten it. And so I'm not applying the lube to the spot where the threads screw into the nipple, I'm applying it basically right where it connects to the rim. Now that the spokes are getting a bit tighter, when I'm tightening it, I can they're bladed spokes so I can see them twisting. And that's what this tool is for. It basically holds the bladed spoke in place while I tighten it, and so it prevents spoke twisting. So the spoke tension is relatively tight now. I haven't tried to true the wheel yet for left, right, up, down, all that stuff. But what I'm gonna do is, uh, it's called stress relieving the wheel, so I have some gloves on. I'm just gonna hold pairs of spokes pull pretty hard and go to the next one. And the reason I'm doing this is just so that the spokes kind of straighten out. Uh, they're still a little bit bent maybe around the hub flange. So just hoping to get them nice and straight. And then I'll true the wheel, add a little bit more tension. I'm gonna do this a few times throughout. Sometimes after you pull the spokes lose a bit of tension so it's good to go through a couple different cycles for this rim here, they recommend, DT Swiss recommends 1200 newton meter spoke tension as the max. So that's probably what my drive side is going to be. The non-drive side is probably going to be a little bit less. Um, but if I can get the wheel perfectly true with roughly 1200 on the drive side, that's basically perfect and the wheel will be done. Alright, so the wheel's in the stand now and as you can see it's not perfectly true. There's one spot where it rubs. And so, let's just find it, right here. So I can feel it rubbing. And because the rim is getting pulled to the left, to this way, um, I can either loosen the spokes on this side or tighten the spokes on this side. If I tighten the spokes on this side, it'll pull the rim this way, whoops. And if I loosen the spokes, on the other side, it'll have the same effect. In this case, I'm gonna tighten the drive side spokes, and it feels like it's right here, at this spoke here. So I'm gonna tighten this spoke, maybe a turn or two, and hopefully it goes away. All right, so it's not rubbing anymore. It's still not perfect. I'm gonna keep working at it on both sides and try to get it as true as possible. So the issue I'm seeing now with the wheel is it has a bit of a hop in it which basically means that when it spins, it's relatively true, but it's going kind of up and down right here. It has an up and down wave almost. And so the way I'm gonna correct this, instead of playing with the left and right, if the rim is diving down, I'm gonna tighten two or three spokes where it's diving down, and on the opposite end of the rim, I'm gonna loosen two or three spokes, and hopefully that'll move the whole rim away and get it smoother. This is probably about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. So now the last step is just to bring the spoke tension up to the right tension. I have my spoke tension meter to do that. And then to check the dish. I have a chart here. Basically the tension meter measures the deflection of the spoke. So depending on how wide the spoke is, it'll deflect a different amount. Uh, so the chart helps you convert that to the actual tension. As I said, I'm looking for 1200 newton meters on the drive side. No idea what I'm going to get non-drive side, but if it's true and properly dished with 1200-ish on the drive side, then that's going to be good enough for me. So 
So it's actually a touch over on the drive side. So what I'm going to do first is de-stress or stress relieve the spokes that might bring it down a little bit. Then I'm going to check the dish of the wheel uh, because it's possible that it's dished too far towards the drive side, in which case I'll loosen all the drive side spokes just a quarter turn or so, and that should be perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to dish the wheel. I'm going to take it out of the sand, and I'm going to use my dishing tool right here. Setting the dishing tool on both ends of the rim, and in the middle, you might be able to see there's a gauge that gets really close to touching the hub. It's maybe a millimeter away, and it just basically has to be even on one side to the other. And so on this side, it's maybe four or five millimeters away. So what I need to do is basically pull the hub this way. And in order to do that, I have to loosen the non-drive side spokes and actually tighten the drive side spokes. I'm not going to tighten the drive side spokes anymore because I know that they're at the recommended tension. So what I'm going to do is just loosen all the non-drive side spokes, maybe a half turn. The wheel should stay true because I'm only just I'm moving everything to one side. Uh, but I'll measure it again, and, and if it's not true, I'll I'll adjust. All right, I redished it, and right here, basically almost touching. And same on the other side. When my wheel's done, I checked the dish, I checked the trueness, I checked for hops, I checked all the spoke tension. It's about as even as I can possibly get it, and I'm, and I'm happy with uh, the turnout. The spokes aren't always exactly the same tension, one to the other, uh, but I think if you try to get them within 10% uh, on each side, that should be pretty good, and, and I've had good experience so far with the other wheels I've built. And for the sound check. Thank <laughs> you.